Hey, WayFam, how you doing? We just want to thank you for tuning in to a Wayworld Outreach sermon. We believe that God's word is going to change your life forever. So sit back and let's get ready to hear the word of God. We've been going through a series that's called Four Keys to Producing a Harvest. And, and when we talk about this word harvest, it, it just means this. There's four keys to getting spiritual results. Does anybody want spiritual results? There's keys to this. And, and if I could find out these keys, I could start unlocking some breakthroughs and miracles that God has for me and God has for my family and God has for my church and God has for others in this world. So when God speaks, he gives his word, but he never speaks without a goal of producing something new, something great. He always speaks to produce a spiritual result. God is never speaking to entertain. He is speaking to get miracles, to get results. To, this is what he, he's speaking to impact our lives. So I pray that you come tonight not to be a specta spectator, but I pray that you come tonight to get ready to receive something that God has for you. I want some spiritual results. I need some breakthroughs that I personally cannot produce, but God can produce. So let's look at Mark chapter 4, verse 14 through 15, actually 14 through 17. And it says this, the farmer plant seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. So Jesus is introducing a story on how to get results and he uses what we call a parable to illustrate the principle he's trying to teach. And he said there was a farmer and what he did, he started throwing out seed. And not all seed fell on the right, in the right place. There's some seed that fell on the footpath. That means where people are walking. It didn't fall where the ground was tilled. It didn't fall where there was fertilizer. And it, it describes a bird coming down and taking that seed and the seed that the bird takes away or the seed that Satan takes away or the word that we don't receive doesn't produce any results. So we talked about that there's actually an enemy to your progress. Sometimes the enemy is within ourselves and, but the Bible's also talking about a spiritual enemy and he doesn't want you to succeed. He doesn't want you to fulfill your purpose. He doesn't want you to get the results that God wants for you. He doesn't want you to prosper. So his first line of defense or his first attack is to make sure you don't even receive the word. That means you could be in this room and you could, this is what could happen. You could be so distracted while I'm speaking or while God's speaking that you don't hear a thing. Has ever happened wise with your husbands? You're speaking and at the end, do you hear me? And they go, uh, what would you say? Right, those things happen. They, maybe they're watching the, the, the football game or they're thinking about a problem at work and you're hearing the speaking, but you're not communicating. That means the message is not coming across. If we're going to start producing in our lives, we're going to have to learn how to be good listeners. We need to come in this room saying this, I'm not coming just to hear. I am coming to learn. I am coming to grow and I'm coming to apply new ideas, new principles and new truths so I can get new results. So don't let the enemy steal your seed by not even paying the attention to the message. What it means is this, if you don't understand what's being said, you cannot get a result from it. You guys get that? You can never solve a math problem if you don't understand how the math problem works. Some of us in this room have some major problems and God has a solution 
And many of our solutions are going to come through our ears as we're hearing the farmer speak and produce and plant seed to produce a result that you and I have been I mean, hungry for or waiting for. So let's not let the enemy steal our seed. So key number one is how do, how do, we, get, how do we get results? Don't let Satan take your seed. But now we're going to go under key number two. And we're going to, this is, I, I introduced this subject last week, and we're going to dive into it a little deeper. And this is important. If you're going to produce results, if you're going to get a harvest, you must be able to get through difficult times. Say it with me. Must be able to get through. There's an old saying, no pain, no gain. You know, today I went to the gym and, and man, it was a horrible experience. I'm serious. Every muscle was hurting. I felt my joint was out of place. And I hear, heard a voice telling me, you're too old for this stuff. Go back home. Well, I didn't go back home. I just continued to torture myself because I want to get results. And just because you're going through a little pain, a little resistance, a hard time in your life, it doesn't mean that you're not moving towards your greatest results or your greatest harvest or your greatest success that you've ever experienced. Get through the pain to get to the gain. Most people cannot get through a process to get any results. It's easy to start school. It's a whole nother thing to finish school. It's easy to start serving God. It's a whole nother thing to stay planted in the house of God and produce the results that God has for you. It's easy to say vows on the day you got married, but it's difficult to live out those vows until death do we part. It's a whole nother game. It's a whole nother show. And what God is saying, the best part of your life is on the other side of your pain. Just because their pain, their pain doesn't mean that you're not in the process of gain. So in Mark chapter 4 verse 16 it says this, the seed that, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. So there's a group of people that actually receive the message. The first group, they let the enemy, they let Satan take the seed away. That seed could never produce it because they never understood it. They weren't paying attention. They doubted it when it was spoken. Or maybe they were even offended while the teacher was speaking. Could it be that you're not receiving the message because you're offended with the messenger? Or mess, uh, offended with the message? Have you ever argued with somebody? You know when you're arguing with somebody, you know what you're thinking? The next thing you're going to say you're not thinking what they're saying. You're arguing. You're ready for your next point. You're hearing them, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, right, wait till like, you finish talking. I'm ready to give you mine. So there's no communication happening. There's no relationship building. So this is what happens. When we're in a room like this, be careful that you don't get offended or be, have a negative mindset towards the teacher, towards the word, because it steals your word. It steals your harvest. I am not here to justify my life. I am here to repent, to change, so I could get some new results. I'm tired of getting what I've been getting, so I have to look myself in the mirror and say, I take personal responsibility. Marco, it's time to grow. Is that right? So now he moves on. He says, now there's another group that receives it, though. They don't reject it. They don't fight it. They don't doubt it. They read, they're paying attention. They receive it, and they said this, they receive it immediately. And, and it's okay to receive something immediately, but if you accept it too immediately, I start thinking, did you even think about it? What I mean by that is, was there any thought process in the commitment that you just made? Because we're not, I want, I, we can't receive this with just emotions. We have to think about, I'm making a decision for change. You know why most people don't really change? Because they don't really think things through. They really don't really commit 
What are you really saying? What are you really committing to? We need to start getting deeper in our decision making process. Think it through. Count the cost. Are you serving Jesus? If you're going to serve Jesus, think about it. That means giving up your old lifestyle and following Jesus. That means I might have to give up my, some of my old friends, my old habits, but I'm serious. I'm ready to serve God. We want to get great results. We want to have change, but we don't want to change. There, see, before there's a resurrection of something new, there has to be a dying of something old. So this person's receiving it with joy. They're emotional. They're excited. You know you could leave here excited and still not produce a harvest? Because every decision you make for the betterment of your life, the betterment of your family, the betterment of your future will be tested. If it was that easy, you would have did it a long time ago. You guys get that? If it was that easy, you would already did it. So every time that God wants to do something new, he'll give us a word, but that word will be tested. Say it with me. The word will be... You know what the old saying is? Talk is cheap. Are we serious? Every marriage will be tested. Every ministry will be tested. Every business will be tested. Every idea will be tested. Every vision will be tested. Every goal will be tested. Every single thing that's good will be tested. And the question is, how bad do you want it? So let's look at it. He says, see, see that fell on rocky soul represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with... Joy, excitement, fun, happiness, awesome. But since they don't have deep roots or deep commitments, they don't last very long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. That this rocky soil represents rocky times. It rep rep represents trouble. It represents obstacles. It represents resistance. It represents sickness. It represents financial problems. It represents being offended. It represents people walking out on you. It represents the, the negativity that you're experiencing in life. It represents all those things. But it's part of the process. You know what, th why this ser sermon is so important? Because you could maybe think that you're way off in life just because you made a decision to do right. And then after you made a decision to do right, it looked like all hell broke loose. It's true. I made a decision to exercise and all hell broke loose on my body. I didn't have this pain. I felt like I have a fever on my body right now. Right? Right? But I'm desiring change. And since I'm desiring change, I'm pushing against every single weakness within me. See, the process is not meant to break you. The process is meant to drive out every single thing that's been trying to hold you back. Don't you quit in the middle of your process. This is what we're saying. You got to. You got to hang. That means you got to stick with it. You got to hold on. You got to dig in. We need to commit to start getting some great results. See, what you don't overcome today, I want you to get this. You got to deal with tomorrow. We got to stop looking for the least line of resistance. What's well, easier over here? Easy does not produce greatness. The road to hell is the easy road. Wow. Wasn't that an amazing word we just got done hearing? Now, before we leave, can I pray with you real quick? God, right now, I just want to pray for the person on the other side of this lens, God. You see their heart, God, and you see their needs, God, and, and I pray that you provide them with everything that they need, God. And I pray that you continue to show yourself to them, God, and to grow them in your word and in your spirit, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you believe that this word has impacted your life and you would like to do the same for somebody else, do us a favor and click this link up here or follow and click the link in the description box. We love you, Wave Fam, and until next time, see you later.